looks like a remix version of the yeah. open. <laughs> Let's go with that. All right. <laughs> we are taking a live look outside in Greeley where they're still digging out from all of the snow more than just over a foot yesterday and then also dealing with some fog this morning as well. Poor Greeley. I know it's been a weekend for them. <laughs> <laughs> taking a live look in the high country. If you're heading up a little bit of traffic going up to the mountains, but uh, yeah, what else is new? It's Super Bowl Sunday, so at least not everybody's going up to the mountains. Today's actually kind of a hack. Go skiing today because it was so many people are watching the game. It was still kind of backed up, though. Getting to breath was still taking over two hours, so. Welcome to Colorado. Yeah, probably <laughs> going to just watch the game up there, so. <laughs> yeah. And want to make sure to let you know that there are some slick roads out there. If you yes. are driving down through Denver right now, be careful until the sun comes up and melts all of those roads. It is slippery. And the airport misery map, Denver is looking a little bit better than yesterday. One cancellation, 41 delays. Obviously, we saw that big travel impact yesterday with that storm moving through. Starting to get more back to normal yeah, now. Trying to come out of it. Nice to see the sun because that's going to help out with the slick roads today. And you might remember a week ago we had at this time that horribly dense fog, which led to. That's right, right after the storm. Yeah. Right after the storm. And that meant that at DI, I think at one point they got down to 500 feet of visibility. Mm -hmm. Can't fly um, a plane through that. You can't fly a plane through that. And that led to a total mess at the airport. We're not seeing that today. So that is That's certainly nice. good news, at least at the airport. Uh, I know we're dealing with some fog up in Greeley. We were just showing you that a second ago. But in terms of travel impacts, it looks like uh, a lot better today compared to a week ago, compared to yesterday. That said, as Mark was just saying, we are looking at some of those slippery side roads on this Sunday morning. That's the kind of extra point of concern. So again, slippery side roads, sidewalks, things like that. I know it kind of looks inviting. It's been cloudy and just kind of cold the last couple of days. So you're like, oh, okay, today's the day for the dog walk, for the jog. Um, it looks inviting outside. Just keep in mind, again, it's slippery out there. Sun's going to melt that off later on today. And then we're pretty tranquil for most of the week, of course, until Saturday. That said, HD operator is quiet right now. A little bit of snow for us here in far southern Colorado along in South Highway 50. This will dissipate in the next hour or two. That sunshine returns. It's a pretty nice day ahead for us. Temperatures will get up to around 40 degrees for us here in Denver. Again, some of that patchy fog this morning, especially for friends in Greeley and along the banks of the South Platte. Otherwise, we'll see that fog dissipate in the next hour or two, and that'll give way to sunny skies for us. Highs in the 30s and 40s for us in the eastern plains, mostly in the 20s in the high country. So again, a little bit below our seasonal average, but you look ahead over the next couple of days, and it's pretty tranquil for us through Thursday. Breezy, mild, a couple degrees above our seasonal averages. And then by Friday and Saturday, we got some snow ahead once again for us on the weekend. I'll have details on that coming up in my full forecast. We also want to remind you that the Denver Coliseum is open 24 hours right now. This is a part of a pilot program, and it's the first time the city has opened an overnight shelter like this when it's still above 20 degrees but expected to get colder. It's going to be open through Friday. The United Nations says it's, quote, extremely worried that Israel's plan to get civilians out of southern Gaza ahead of a planned invasion there could have catastrophic consequences. The Israeli prime minister ordered his military to evacuate the city of Rafah. That's the southernmost Palestinian city in the Gaza Strip. More than a million people are currently taking refuge there. A ground invasion of Rafah appears imminent, and Israel's prime minister continues to say that Israel will not stop until it achieves, quote, total victory. Hungarian President Katalin Novak is resigning from office following mounting criticism of her decision to pardon a man that was implicated in a child sex abuse case. She said in a quote, in a statement, quote, I made a mistake as the pardon and the lack of reasoning were conducive to triggering doubts about the zero tolerance that applies to pedophilia. And taking responsibility for her mistake, she also apologized again, quote, to those whom I may have offended and to all of the victims impacted. What happened to her husband? Where is he? He's gone. He knew. He knew. Moving to the campaign trail here in the United States for the 2024 election, former President Donald Trump was mocking Nikki Haley's husband, who was deployed overseas serving in the military. Trump taunted him at a rally last night. Haley took time to fire back during a campaign rally in South Carolina yesterday. Donald, if you have something to say, don't say it behind my back. Get on a debate stage and say it to my face. Haley went on to say, quote, if you mock a ser the service of a combat veteran, you don't deserve a driver's license, let alone being the president of the United States. Michael Haley, Nikki Haley's husband, is deployed in Africa with the South Carolina Army National Guard in support of United States Africa Command.
We are counting down the hours to Super Bowl 58. According to the American Gaming Association, nearly 68 million people in the U.S. are planning to place a wager on the game. Experts say gamblers are spending more than $23 billion on the game this year. Of course, Chiefs against the 49ers. Kickoff is set for 4.30 our time. And it is going to be a huge night for anyone who's selling the drinks and the chicken wings and all the good food today. Remember when we ran out of chicken wings a couple years ago? It was wild. Like, I feel no like all of us wings like, this year. What? That can happen? We're told that's not going to happen this year. In fact, <laughs> one bar in Denver is about to capitalize on a heck of a lot of 49ers fans in town. Nine News' is Janelle Finch takes us there. Saturday night, the biggest game happening at Tony Tenderoni's on Market Street is happening over in the corner. But come Sunday, another game will have the bar's attention. Here we are, Super Bowl time. Georgie San Miguel helps run this place and a few others nearby. And he knew he wanted to partner with a local fan club at the start of the season. Tony's became our 49ers bar from the beginning. 5280, the Mile High 49ers have taken over Tony's every weekend all season long. San Miguel says Sunday Super Bowl will be a big one, both here and at his other restaurant locations. We're anticipating on maybe 800 to 1,000 tomorrow. Tony Tenderoni's, which is our sports bar, Jaguar Room, Agua Bendita, Con Safos and El Patio. For this restaurant group, the timing couldn't be more perfect. This has been a blessing for us economically because, you know, with the winter season, we've had some issues. You know, we had some pipes that burst in one of our facilities and that led into, you know, some flooding. And so we had to close for a couple of weeks. So this couldn't come at a better time. He says there'll be plenty of wings and chicken tenders to go around, even if fans aren't diehard 49ers and just hoping for a good game. The more the merrier. I mean, we want to rock this place out. So before the season, the 5280 mile high 49ers would meet at the Blake Street Tavern for game day, but then it closed last spring. So now they found that new home in Tony's. So let's talk some basketball as well. Los Angeles Lakers unveiled a new 19 foot bronze statue honoring late NBA superstar Kobe Bryant. The 4,000 pound statue shows Kobe in his white number eight jersey, of course with his right index finger raised as he walked off the court following his 81-point performance against the Toronto Raptors in January of 2006, one of his most iconic moments during his career, now with that statue outside the Lakers arena. That's pretty cool. 